here on the live stage at YouTube's presence at PAX Prime 2015. I'm Chris Waters for GameSpot, and I am here to talk with some guys from Bungie about one of the biggest releases this fall, Destiny the Taken King. Luke, Mark, thank you guys for joining me here on stage. Thanks for having us, man. Dude, it's, uh, it's just a few weeks away, the Taken King, and you guys have been like teasing stuff out over the past few weeks, like really ramping up to, to a pretty big release. We hope so. I mean, over the last few weeks, we've been revealing more information and trying to get people excited and understand what the game's going to be about this fall. And one of the things it is going to be about is like a really big new narrative push. There's a huge new story. Uh, you, I think I heard you guys say that, uh, you know, like com this compared to the, when Destiny launched, this has more sort of story content, more story missions. It's a beefier story experience. Yeah, like there, there's a brand new campaign, right? Like the Taken King is here and, and he, you know, he's, he's got one thing in mind, and that's revenge for the death of his son, Crota. And, uh, you know, we've, we've invested a lot of time in, in improving storytelling in The Taken King. And, you know, there's, we've got a bunch of, you know, cin real actual cinematics. And, and um, you know, we really wanted to focus on the characters in, in year two of Destiny. And we, we've taken some of the characters that people re have really resonated with them in the tower, those characters that you've been sort of working with for the last year, buying gear from. And, and brought them into the game more. So like Kate Six, he's one of the Vanguard mentors, uh, voiced by Nathan Fillion. And he's one of the primary characters in the game now. And so you'll be going on missions and he's talking to you and he's really funny, right? And, and this is a thing we wanted to bring forward is some of that humor. And like in, in, the, in Destiny right now, if you go stand next to Kate Six and you just listen to him, he says some stuff. And one of the things he says is, take me with you. <laughs> and, and you're like, wow, like, he really wants to be out there fighting with me. This is awesome. And we thought, this character is so compelling. Like, we need to bring him and some of the other characters into the game. You, know? you did kind of get that sense, the little bit of like a caged bird sense from some of those vendors. Like, man, I bet you have some stories to tell. <laughs> tell me some of them. Well, and that, that's, I mean, that's exactly it, right? Like, we haven't ever communicated the backstory for these characters or let you learn anything about these characters who've had this like, otherwise like, transactional relationship with, like, I'm going to give you Vanguard marks. You're going to give me armor. Uh -huh. uh, and now these guys are going to be pushing you through missions a little bit. We're also taking a bunch of notes from the way that the game's been evolving over the last year. Like watching, watching the team introduce new characters like Eris and then Varix and Petra and getting to hear more voices and characterful interactions. And in a game that, that the premise of the game is revenge, like that is an opportunity to be pretty, pretty dark. But when you have a guy like Philly and he can inject a bunch of humor into that darkness. Yeah, it's nice to have a little bit of levity there when the whole fate of humanity is on the line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think one of the things, uh, you know, sort of, one of the ways, you know, obviously the cutscenes are like are lovely and like really, uh, like the the thing you sort of strive to see at the end of your quest. But you also want that quest to tell the story. When you're out in the field, you want you know the story to be communicated to you while you're while you know between shooting breaks. And you guys have done some of that with uh, you know with Ghost and I think with the way that like. You've talked about the structure of the quests for Taken King being a little different, being a little bit more like exotic bounties in the past. Can we get a little bit into sort of how that structure is going to just like really bolster the, the narrative experience in Yeah, Taken I mean, there, King? There, there's two things there that we can talk about. The first is the usage of the ghost. So we, we brought Nolan North on board to voice the ghost, and he's doing an awesome job. But we, wa we wanted to find the ghost's voice a little bit differently this fall with the sort of opt-in lore, this thing that you have your little robot droid sidekick. Like, what can he tell you about this Cabal base you're looking at when you're walking around it? Like, he's got a little information. So we added a new system that's Ghost Scan that lets you sort of opt in if you want to explore the world and find a little extra lore. So that's one way that we've done it. The other thing that you're asking about, the quest system, we overhauled the, the entirety of all the Destiny content into this thing that we've just called Questification. And that's basically, I mean, it, like to talk about quests like they're a new thing is sort of embarrassing. But what we're trying to do is give players a clear, clear context for what they're doing and why, clear rewards for what they're going to get at, at the end of it, and hope that that helps give them some thrust into the world versus the, hey, you finished, you finished a story campaign, now find your own fun, which is, I think, sort of what we bumped into a little bit last fall with the, the release of uh, last year's game. Mm -hmm. Now you guys have been over the course of this, over the course of year one, so active with hearing community responses and like connecting with the game, with the the, the people's experience of how they, you know, how they experience Destiny. What, where are their sort of lacks? Where are their opportunities for you guys to to come in? And I think one of the interesting ways you did that was uh, for the raid for Crota. You know, that was a normal mode raid, but then you developed the hard mode raid as sort of a reaction to how people were taking on the normal mode. Uh, is that is that sort of the design philosophy going forward, or sort of when, when you tackle this raid, the King's Hall, King's Fall? 
How are you coming at it? So what we did with Kingsfall was the raid team, having learned a bunch of a bunch of great lessons on Crota, the, the time delta between normal and heroic allowed us to fix a bunch of bugs. Uh, this time, mechanically, when we set out to build Kingsfall, we built the hard mode version first. So we built all of the hard mode mechanics. We actually added new mechanics for a bunch of the fights. We've got some other sort of new stuff for the raids that we're not talking about yet. But, uh, and then what we did after that was we scaled it back to normal so that we have the hard mode that we understand the mechanics for and then a normal experience that, again, meets those like, really important raid pillars of any motivated group of six players can communicate, cooperate, and get through the raid. Mm -hmm. And you teased a little something extra for the raid as well. Just, give, just repeat the tease. I know you're not going to tell me what it well, is. So we developed the <laughs> hard mode version of the raid and then we scale it back to normal. We have a little bit more planned for the raids this fall. We're not talking about them just yet. All right, cool. Uh, so, let, but let's talk about that hard mode and the way that mechanics are brought into it. Because uh, I think some of the more exciting fights in Destiny are where there are different mechanics that subvert the way you normally play the game and create a new strategic challenge. Uh, you guys, it sounds like you're doing a bunch of that also in the Courts of Oryx. Yeah. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about that. The Court of Oryx is this place on the Dreadnought. And the Dreadnought is the Taking King's capital ship. And you come across this, this area, and there are these six statues in, in a kind of an atrium-like uh, place. And what you can do with each of these statues, if you collect a certain ruin, you can use the ruin on the statue. And what it'll do is it will trigger a public event. And you know a rift in space-time opens up, and bosses start pouring out of it. And these bosses, each one of them has some kind of u unique mechanic or uh, you know, system that players you know, in public, are going to have to figure out together. Um, I wouldn't say they're, you know, the, they're as difficult as the raid, but they're sort of raid-like. And uh, we, we're really excited about it because it gives the opportunity for, you know, someone just running through an area. He's on a mission, maybe, and he looks over and sees someone someone's a boss, and there's a countdown. If I, if I get in there in the next 10 seconds, I can, I can participate in this and help this guy out. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have, a, we have a bunch of bosses that you can summon, and there are different tiers that you know, eventually you get access to and you get really, really good rewards for participating in it. So um, we're stoked about it. One of, the, one of the things about Court that was really important to us is we wanted a way for, there's so much to do on the Dreadnought. It's unlike any place we've ever built. There's already a bunch of stuff to explore and hunt down and find. But we wanted Court of Orcs to also be this thing that reached out to you and your buddies as an opportunity like, hey, did you get a rune while we were playing? Like, let's go bang that out. Or you like slip through the bubble and you see in the distance when you walk in, you see the fight going on and you're like, oh shit, let's get in on that. It's so, already happening. Yeah, and like yeah. Mark was saying, there are three tiers um, and you'll find different runes for each and they get, they require more and more powerful gear. So it's also gonna, your progression through Court of Orcs is gonna really mirror your progression through the game because you're not going to be able to get to that higher tier unless you've got that gear. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about gear for a second because one of the sort of much debated topics is uh, exotics. Everyone loves go. chasing those exotics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are after them and, uh, you know, year one exotics and year two exotics, like, are, you know, those exotics that people hunted down, their, their hawk moons, their gallar horns, all that stuff, that going to be viable come the year two or is that like you, you're just going to give them some new stuff to chase? We have a bunch of new stuff to chase, right? Like the start of the Taken King is the beginning of year two. And, you know, Oryx, the Taken King, is more powerful. He's on a ship that's millions, thousands of years old. And it's full with loot and, and full with gear. And, and he's brought this Taken army with them. And they're stronger. So you're going to have to find more powerful gear in year two to really be at the cutting edge. But, you know, we do have some things. Yeah, there, there's a guy out in the shirt uh, out in the audience right now wearing a shirt that says "Keep Calm and Galhorn," and uh, <laughs> what I'm hoping to see next year is a shirt like this that says "Keep Calm and Touch of Malice." Like we've got new powerful shit for people to check out. We're also bringing some of those some of those weapons forward into year two. We're not bringing all of them forward. All right, one of the new things for gear hunters is uh, the artifact. Another slot, another thing. This one's actually not unlike I. You know, you guys. When I was watching the live stream, you said it's not cosmetic which actually made me realize how much of the gear in Destiny is cosmetic and how much it just like goes towards making you look and feel like a badass. Uh, but why, what, why did you want to like throw in a little extra thing there, the artifacts, sort of what purpose does that serve outside of other gear, gear's role? Well, in, in overhauling the progression system with the new light system, we wanted all of the slots to matter. We also really wanted the game to feel more generous and you to actually get way more loot when you're playing the game. We wanted to lean into the fact that we are a loot game. Mm -hmm. And in order to do stuff like this, we need to add extra slots to the character. And what we did with the artifact slot was we took a particular type of perk 
like orb generation for a variety of different things. And we isolated that down into the artifact slot so that what you're doing when you're hunting for artifacts is you're looking at either the current subclass you have equipped. Am I running the Defender Titan or the Sunbreaker Titan? Well, that's going to influence if I want the Void Grenade perk or the uh, Solar Grenade perk that triggers the orbs. Or if it's off of precision kills, you're going to be looking at your arsenal and going like, oh, I have this arc precision kills artifact. I guess I'm going to use my arc sniper rifle. It's just to allow more customization, tinkering. That's another one of our big things, big things for year two is in last year's game, the grind for power was so long, man. It was, it was a long quest to get into that it vault of glass. Time. Yeah, it took, it took some time. We know yeah. that. We, we definitely have heard that. Well, what we're interested in doing now is lessening that vertical climb and stretching it out horizontally instead. And when I say horizontal progression, I mean getting the right pair of boots that have the exact talents and stats on them. You're getting that base power level much easier to get into the activities that you want to play. But like that extra 1%, that final 5% of efficacy, that can take a little bit more time because that ultimately doesn't matter to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But it does matter to some real hardcore players. And those guys have like sustained you guys in like a real powerful way. I think one of the challenges for Taken King that you guys have is like, how do you like, you know, you create that stuff that's going to like really draw on the hardcore and like allow them to just tinker and tweak, but then also create an opportunity that makes it feel welcoming to people who may be like, you know, I played it last year, but I kind of fell off or my buddies have been playing it. They've been trying to get me in, but I just don't know. Like to, to bring in a new audience as well with Taken King. So how do you guys sort of balance that? Yeah, it's totally been a balancing act since we started working on the project. But, you know, one of the things we've done is we've introduced this new item called the Spark of Light that anyone who buys the Taken King, whether you know, you're buying the $40 upgrade or you're buying the new $60 like all-in package, the Legendary Edition, gets this item. And as soon as you play the first mission in the game, you go to the tower, you talk to the Postmaster, and you'll get this. And what the Spark of Light does, it will automatically upgrade you to level 25, which is the starting level for the Taken, you know, uh, the Taken King. And you get a, a new suit of armor and guns ready to go to play, you know, alongside your buddies. So if your friend's been thinking about playing Destiny, and you're level 34, now is still a perfect time for them to come in because within 20 minutes, they can be playing an activity with you. And they're right alongside you, yeah. doing whatever you guys are doing. Obviously, the crew over here is hype. Yeah, here on the live. Those guys are real, they're real excited yeah. for uh, They just can't wait to level like yeah. that quickly. Yeah, I, I didn't know they buds. would be so excited about this. <laughs> you know, you guys are giving the people what they want. It's exciting. We're trying. Uh, so, Destiny the Taken King, you guys are aiming at September 16th? 15th. So close. 15th, yeah. September 15th. A few short weeks away. And uh, going to be some more live streams, a little more tidbits of information uh, and, as the date approaches. Yeah, we have one more next Wednesday. Uh, that's going to be focused on the Dreadnought, checking out that new destination, Court of Oryx. We've got one of the designers, Ben Womack, is going to be on the show along with our community ambassador, uh, Laced Up Lauren. It's going to be awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on the stage and talking about the Taken King. Thanks for having uh, us. Very exciting few weeks until we see that one come out. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. All right, folks, for more on Destiny the Taken King, be sure to go to gaming.youtube.com slash GameSpot. We have all the breakdowns of their live streams and our own super passionate Destiny players bringing you all their expertise as well. We're back here on the live stage at PAX Prime in just a few minutes. Stay with us.